Triangle Rivalry Week. NC State on Saturday gave up to lead to you gave up the lead to UNC in the second half, and that's the nicest way you can say it. But also, UNC took the lead from NC State in the second half, right? There's two sides to every story, there's two sides to every coin. I still think North Carolina is is waiting on their team to put together a full game going back to the Duke game on February 2nd. So we're going back about a month since they put together a complete and total game of good basketball. That's not to say they haven't been impressive. They're on a four-game winning streak right now. They're the number seven team in the country as of the AP poll being updated earlier today. They're you know on track to be a, a two-seed in the NCAA tournament. They have all the buys in the ACC tournament. They are a very good team. I'm still waiting on them to put together a full game. They haven't done it in a while. And you're running out of time to like you know start peaking. The, the ACC tournament is not super far away. Right? The, the Duke-UNC game that ends the season every year is on Saturday. The good news for UNC, and the great news for UNC, is that usually one half of great basketball for that team can make up for whatever the heck they do in the other half. If their defense lets NC State shoot a ridiculous number, if, if their offense goes quiet, if some of their best scores can't get it done, usually they have another half that's that's much better and good enough to overcome whatever that other mess was. You know, the 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 first half of the State Carolina game was very much a game where, you know, it was a quintessential way for North Carolina to lose a basketball game. NC State caught fire at times. Their best score was outscoring UNC's best score. Uh, the shots weren't falling for UNC. That there was a lot going in favor of NC State. And then the second half came around and it flipped. Here's their head coach Hubert Davis on switching things around at halftime and into that second half. To be the best that we can be, we have to step it up on the defensive end. We've got to rebound and take care of the basketball. But defensively, you know, we stepped up. In the first half, NC State was shooting nearly 60% from the field. Just not going to get it done. They were running their offense like they do in shoot-around, getting wide-open shots. We weren't impactful, physical on the ball. And that's something that we had talked about before the game is being competitive on the ball, whether it's a one-on-one situation, ball screen, in the post. And in the second half, we stepped up and... Um, I, I felt like we were making them work so hard to be able to get a shot that it was allowing them to miss shots. They were coming up short because of our, our presence on the ball. And so, and I felt like when things got a little chippy, it ignited us a little bit as well. Things got chippy and it ignited them a little bit. I mean, you like that. Do you know what I like about the, the UNC second half? Harrison Ingram and Elliot Cadeau were the highlight guys in this one. R.J. Davis, I'm just, it was an underwhelming game for R.J. Davis. Sets the bar high, but underwhelming game for R.J. Davis. He had a good second half. Yeah, uh, good. Armando Baycott wasn't very efficient, which he traditionally is. Mm-hmm. Cormac Ryan did very little as far as scoring the basketball or providing those boost plays. He had a nice block in, in transition. Give him that. Yep. And he's, he's always going to be a little bit of a pest. Him and DJ Horn tripping over each other at ha- halftime. Yeah. Whatever that was we're, with the chest bumping and then flailing. But he's always going to be a bit of that hustle guy. But uh, specifically on the offensive end, Cormac Ryan didn't bring a, a ton. But it was Harrison Ingram dunking. Harrison Ingram highlight play. Elliot Cadeau highlight play, falling to the ground, one hand flips, uh, like like everything that they needed, the highlight plays to spark the team to victory came from Cadeau and Ingram. And that's what I'm talking about when I say UNC has this big three. When I say UNC has this core group, you don't need on any given day for all four of them to be playing their A game. If it's just R.J. Davis, you might get 42 and a win. If it's just Baycott, you might get 28 and 13 and a win. If it's Cadeau and Davis, if it's Baycott and Ingram, if it's you know, if it's Baycott and Ingram, you might get 35 rebounds between the two of them. Like they have so many different ways. These four, really, I, I would say three plus Cadeau, maybe three plus Cadeau and, and Ryan on that next level. They they have so many different ways to make up for cold parts of their game. And then yes. It did get a little chippy at times, like I said. You know, guys tripping over each other, maybe a little little 
shoulder shiver as you're walking back to the timeout. Like, those things did happen, and UNC handled it better. Here's Harrison Ingram after the game on the chippiness of the game. For myself, I've got to get energy off of whatever it is, whether it's a rebound or the English chippy. I mean, that's the type of games I want. I'd rather the game be chippy and physical because I'm a big, strong guy than all finesse and refs calling fouls. And, you know, at the end of the day, we got chippy. And we those type of games that we like, same as, like, Florida State game. And a lot of the games that got chippy, we usually come out on top. I'm a big, strong guy. I like chippy. I'm a big, strong guy. I like physical, says Harrison Ingram. But, you know, this is partially – uh, you know, the outcome of the game gets to frame how you feel about it. We played a, a clip from DJ Horn of NC State earlier today. He's talking about the second half not going well for State, and, and he says, you know, the emotions got away from us. Harrison Ingram says, Chippy, we like Chippy. I'm a big, strong guy. I'm going, yeah, maybe you t- tight end.